the San Antonio Spurs were riding high through Christmas, a 23-7 record, 76.7% win rate. They looked like legitimate contenders in the Western Conference, but then something changed after their Christmas Day game against OKC. Since then, 2-4, a 33.3% win rate, they're losing to teams they should beat. Today, we're diving deep into the data to figure out exactly what happened. Is it a shooting slump? Are opponents playing better defense? Or is this just a post-holiday hangover? Let's find out. Let's start with the big picture. Here is every major metric for the Spurs this season, split into two periods. Before and after that OKC Christmas game, the scoring is down. Before OKC, they were averaging 120.3 points per game. After, just 114.5. That's nearly 6 points dropped off, but here's where it gets interesting. Their overall field goal percentage cratered from 48.9% to 42.8%. That's a 6.2% drop. This isn't just one area of the offense struggling, this is system wide. And then we get to the 3 point line. Look at this cliff, 36.9% before OKC down to 28.8% after, that's an 8.1 percentage point drop. Ball movement is slightly down, assists drop from 26.1 to 25.3 per game. Not massive, but noticeable, and here's the kicker. Their plus minus went from plus 7.1 to minus 3.2, that's a 10 point swing. The correlation is clear, when they're shooting well from 3, they win. When they're cold, they lose. Okay, so we know there's a shooting problem, but let's dig deeper into the 3 point shooting specifically, because that's where the damage is most severe. Here's something counterintuitive. They're actually taking more threes after the OKC game. 39.3 attempts per game versus 37.0 before. But they're making fewer 11.3 makes versus 13.6 before. They're chucking up more shots from deep and bricking them. Look at this percentage drop. 36.9% before OKC, right around league average. 28.8% after. That's well below the league average of 35%. But here's the most damning stat. When they shoot over 35% from 3, they win 83% of their games before OKC and 100% after. When they shoot 35% or worse, their win rate plummets to 20% in the recent stretch. Before OKC, they had 18 games shooting over 35% from 3. After OKC, just 1 out of 6 games. Interestingly, their assist rate is actually slightly up after the OKC game. So it's not that they're taking tougher unassisted shots, they're getting similar looks, they're just missing them. So we know the team is shooting poorly, but who's responsible? Let's look player by player. This is brutal. Nearly every key rotation player drops significantly. Harrison Barnes, 40.1% down to 20%, a 20 point drop. De'Aaron Fox, 39.4% down to 20%, a 19 point drop. Devin Vassell, 39.2% down to 20%. He's only played two games since, but still alarming. Look at this chart. Almost everyone is in the red. The only bright spots? Julian Champagne, who's actually shooting better at 42.6% and Keldon Johnson at 50%. But everyone else? Ice cold. And here's something interesting. Champagne is taking three more threes per game after OKC 9 attempts versus 6 before. He's picking up the slack, but even his hot shooting can't offset the team-wide slump. Before OKC, the scoring load was distributed. Vassell, Champagne, Barnes, and Fox were all major contributors. After OKC, Champagne is carrying the load at 34% of Team 3's, but he can't do it alone. Okay, so here's the big question. Is this just a cold streak bad variance post-holiday fatigue? Or are opponents making strategic adjustments and shutting down the Spurs 3 point attack? Let's look at the evidence. First, let's check if all shooting metrics declined, which would suggest an internal slump rather than specific defensive pressure. And yes, 4 out of 5 major shooting categories are down. Field goal percentage, 2 point percentage, 3 point percentage, and effective field goal percentage. The only thing that's up, free throw percentage. This is a team-wide shooting slump, not just perimeter defense clamping down. Now let's look at defensive pressure indicators. If opponents were locking them down, we'd expect more turnovers, but they're actually down fewer assists, slightly down, but not significant. Fewer free throw attempts, but they're actually up. None of these scream increased defensive pressure. 
shot selection is stable, their three point attempt rate is virtually identical. 41.8% of shots are threes now versus 41.7% before. And their assist rate, rate on made field goals is actually up slightly to 63%. They're getting similar quality looks. They're just missing. Uh, let's look at who they played. Utah, Cleveland, New York, Indiana, Portland, Memphis. Some good defenses in there, Cleveland especially, but also some weaker teams like Utah and Portland that they should have handled. And here's the clincher. League-wide three-point percentage during the same period down just 0.4%. The Spurs dropped 8.1%. This isn't a league-wide trend. This is Spurs-specific. So the verdict? The evidence strongly points to an internal shooting slump multiple players going cold at the same time, system-wide shooting declined, and no clear signs of increased defensive pressure. So what's the takeaway here? The Spurs aren't broken. This isn't a scheme issue. This isn't opponents figuring them out. This is variance. This is fatigue. This is the post-holiday hangover. Think about it like your typical office worker coming back from the holidays. You've had a week off, you ate too much, you stayed up late, and now you're back at your desk trying to remember how to do your job. That's the Spurs right now. The good news? Shooting slumps correct themselves. Regression to the mean is real. These same players were elite shooters for 30 games before Christmas. They didn't forget how to shoot in a week. If the Spurs return to their pre-OKC three-point shooting of 36.9%, they win. It's that simple. The formula worked for 30 games. It'll work again. My prediction? Give it another 5-10 to 10 games, let the legs come back, let the rhythm return, they'll be fine. That's it for today's breakdown. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the numbers, hit that subscribe button, drop a comment. Do you think the Spurs will bounce back or is this a deeper issue? And if you want me to analyze another team or player, let me know. Until next time, stay analytical.